Saludos mi gente, les habla su amigo Abel Rojas de Boxeo LB. Esta vez para hablar un poco con Dani Vela. Dani Vela es el jefe de oficiales de USA Boxing en el estado de Nevada. En esta ocasión, eh, Julio Rosario es el que nos va a hacer el favor de hacerle una entrevista. Y pues nada, vamos a, a comenzar para saber un poco de, de eh, Julio. Adelante. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, Danny, what brought you to USA Boxing? Not only as a current, you know, head of officials, but as an amateur boxer. What what brought you to boxing, Danny? Well, initially, I was, you know, I, I came to boxing because my father, he was into it. Uh, he, you know, my family I had some boxers in the family in the past, an uncle and a cousin and things. And so, when I was eight years old, I decided I wanted to do it. I went to um, I went to a local boxing gym, it was a PAL program, Henderson Police Athletic League, and at that point, I fell in love with the sport, you know, like I tell everybody, boxing hooks you from the beginning, it makes you fall in love with it, and then, it, that's all. So, básicamente, el, como llegó el deporte, su papá eh, siempre ha estado en el deporte, y Danny se ingresó en un programa que había de la, de la policía atlética aquí en, en Henderson, y desde entonces se enamoró del deporte, y, y a seguir el deporte de boxeo. Mm -hmm. uh, Mateo, uh, Danny, uh, also, what, what made you no longer be an amateur boxer and made the transition from amateur boxer to a coach, because we know you're a coach, mm -hmm. and now, you know, uh, head of officials? Well, the biggest thing was that from the time I started boxing, I was never one that wanted to be a professional athlete. You know, I have political ambitions, and want to, you know, I, I am a businessman, so I, I love that kind of thing. And um, I just never wanted to be a professional athlete. Some people do, some people don't. I think what boxing does is it shapes us to be disciplined and to carry a level of um, not only discipline but hard work ethic and so on with, you know, to, through our lives in several different areas, boxing, I mean, wherever else, and work. And so um, once I stopped being an amateur, I just realized that I had done it for almost 10 years at that point. I was... Uh, just kind of burnt out, you know, and um, I didn't have ambitions of going pro, so I was 17, it was a big commitment, you know, it, it takes a lot of time to train to be the best, and uh, I decided to step out, and then from that point, took a couple of years off, I was wrestling in high school also, and then from that point, uh, I later decided to come back to it as a coach and as an official, like I said, once you fall in love with the sport, it's always around. So as I got into Danny, what was it? quiso hacer la transición de boxeador a, a coach porque él es coach aquí de su gimnasio undefeated y, y ingresarse en el, como oficial Dani dijo que nunca aspiraba a ser un atleta profesional que le gustaba mucho el, el mundo del negocio que es una de las cosas que él hace y ha estudiado para eso eh, llegó a la edad de 17 y decidió ya ir haciendo la transición al igual que estuvo un tiempo luchando, lucha libre, y nunca quiso dejar deporte porque él sigue amando el deporte amateur de boxeo, es algo que dice que nunca lo dejará y seguirá creciendo en este deporte en diferentes niveles. Danny, um, under, under COVID, a lot, a lot and a, a lot of nothing has happened with, with USA boxing or amateur boxing, I should say, in general. What, what do you see in the foreseeable future for 2021 with USA boxing, and especially here in, in, in the box? Well, I, hope, I certainly hope that in 2021 we can get back to boxing. I think that a lot of it is, um, it's, it's tough because our amateurs, we have some of the hardest working in boxing, I think, the hardest working athletes anywhere in any other sport. And to see that they cannot 
you know, train to their max potential. They can't spar to the, you know, to what they're used to and prepare themselves. And they don't get to sh show what they do inside the gym every single day, you know, out there by competing. They, go, they get to showcase that in front of their friends and family and the local community. And so for 2021, I'm hopeful, okay, that we'll get back to it, that something bigger will come and we'll be able to, um, to do away with the COVID restrictions that we're facing. But I do know that with USA Boxing, it's in a better position than Nevada specifically. But, uh, you know, obviously we're having nationals in December and s several states are competing now. But um, who knows? Only time will tell. At this point, all I can do is follow what the local government says and hope for the best for our boxers. Danny comenta que ha sido bien lamentoso esto de la pandemia, que él, él piensa y como muchos pensamos que, que aquí en, en Nevada hay prácticamente los mejores atletas en el boxeo amateo que, que este año no han podido demostrar lo que se pueden demostrar. Eh, él está todavía con mucha esperanza que se pueda seguir el boxeo amateo en el 2021. Obvio vamos a tener nacionales, es un tema que vamos a tocar con Danny. Y dice que sigue con la esperanza porque es algo que todavía no tenemos tanta certidad qué es lo que va a suceder. Pero ahora con los nacionales es algo que se espera de que hagan preguntas contestadas para el año que viene. Danny, great, great uh, subject about uh, the nationals. Uh, one, are you going? Two, what do you expect from the nationals? And is it going to be something with the Nationals that it could take for the future of 2021 for amateur boxing? Yeah, so um, Nationals I'm very excited about. It's the first time we'll be back in the ring um, since March. So I'm, I'm going as an RJ. I do have um, competitors from my gym. My two younger brothers are competing. My dad will be there as a coach. And um, I'm so excited about it because, as I said, it's the first time our boxers get to go back. It's going to be the largest tournament that we've had in USA Boxing in history. I mean, this is a large tournament. We've got several, I believe, 1,500 registered members, a lot of people. And so, with that said, I, I believe maybe that'll open the gates to larger tournaments in the future. And you know what? The other thing about Nationals, we're going to have several COVID uh, regulations in place. So registration is going to look different. The way in which we organize the bouts is going to look different. So it's going to be very unique. And I think that next year um, it will set the framework for what we're going to see in 2021 and thereafter, you know, especially if COVID continues to be a problem. Wow, yeah. awesome. Danny comenta que él, él sí va a, va, va a ir a las nacionales. Tiene dos hermanos que van a competir en esa nacional. Su papá es coach de los hermanos. Eh, las reglas y muchas normas van a cambiar por el COVID son unas cosas que van a ser muy diferentes de lo que están acostumbrados en el pasado eh, Dani espera que de, esta, de ese formato que se va a hacer en diciembre que se, se use para el futuro de los torneos que van a tomar a plazo en el 2021 y espera que, que ese formato pues funcione obvio porque es algo que nadie lo había hecho antes especialmente en las nacionales uh, Danny, great uh, subject with as well. Your your two brothers. Uh, I know Philip Vela mm -hmm. is one of them. Who, who, who's your other brother? So my other brother is Angelo Vela. He's he's turning eight this year. He turned eight this year, but did not was not able to get his first bout. So he's going to have his first bout at nationals. So he could very well be a national champion in his first first ever tournament, which is exciting. <coughs> so that that. Sabemos que hay muchas complicaciones en el boxeo amateur, ¿qué mensaje le da a los entrenadores y a los padres que han estado preguntando sobre eso? Yeah, um, there's a lot of parents and coaches who are confused by all this that's going on for nationals and the pandemic. Um, uh, what, what suggestions or, or advice do you have for parents and coaches who are kind of in the dark about everything that's going on? Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, RBC is pretty good with emails and mm -hmm. things of that nature, but for people who don't tune in too much to updates, what, what would be your suggestions and updates uh, or advice for what's on the foreseeable future? Yeah, well, the best thing that I could say is that you, you uh, reach out to reach out to our LBC, reach out to me specifically. I mean, I, I am very responsive, as you know. I mean, I, you, you reach out to me, I'll get you the answers, uh, and if I don't have them, I'll find them. 
Um, and I know also that you know, Mike Campbell with USA Boxing and various other individuals that are very responsive and you contact them, they'll answer all your questions. USA Boxing, uh, our website, you know, through, uh, through the Team USA website, um, they've got several resources there. Uh, everything that they email out, usually they archive and put it in the website. So lots of information um, and you know, always just reach out and we can leave, I'm sure, my number somewhere so everybody can contact me. Dani comenta que para todos que están un poco eh, en la oscuridad ¿verdad? con lo, la pandemia, que él personalmente le contesta a los padres, a los coches, a los atletas, eh, personalmente de, de todo lo que va a suceder y lo que está sucediendo si tienen dudas o preguntas. Al igual con Mike Campbell, Mike Campbell eh, eh, también ayuda mucho a Dani en esto de, la, de las preguntas que muchos eh, nunca tienen las contestaciones. Pero sí le dice que él personalmente va a dejar el número con boxeo leve para que cualquier atleta, cualquier padre o cualquier entrenador coach que tengan preguntas de lo que está sucediendo ahorita en USA Basso. So Danny, um, another question I was going to ask you, we, 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 you've shown your leadership for a long time. Uh, and it, it's, it's funny to say a long time, you know, because you're, you're young, right? But you've always shown leadership in, in, in this LBC and USA Boxing. We know you're the current head of officials. Do, do you see yourself in the, in the foreseeable future becoming more involved in other positions in USA Boxing, including presidency for LBC? Mm -hmm. do, do you see that in your future, or do you, con do you want to continue as a head of official what, what do you see in Danny in the, in the future of LBC 49 and Bob? Well, I think that the best thing about being an elected official in any capacity, whether it's in real public office, you know, or in, in a non-profit organization like our LBC and like USA Boxing, it's that you're elected for a certain amount of time and that in, those, in that time frame, you have the ability to teach others, right, and to, to help them to grow and develop. And that's why I do it. You know, I, I'm passionate about that, passionate about helping others. And so I look at it, I'm elected to four years as chief of officials, and in that time, whether I continue on afterwards, I maybe will. I love being chief of officials. Uh, I don't see myself going to any other positions just because my passion right now is for, is for the chief uh, uh, spot on the LBC. But um, I think the point of it, as I said, is in those four years, now I have other officials that I can groom to that so that I, you know, after my term is up, if I don't continue, you know, we have some very well uh, rounded individuals that can continue that and and make it better you know and that's I think ultimately the goal but uh, I wouldn't rule it out you know maybe if down the line I feel like I'd like to move into another position I certainly would but as chief right now I love it I love my officials that I work with and the impact that we get to have on the coaches and the boxers and establishing a fair and transparent officiating system in Nevada is my top priority really mm -hmm. Dani comenta que él, él le encanta su posición como oficial. Eh, él no descarta que tal vez en un futuro se mueva de posición, pero ahora mismo su pasión es continuar siendo jefe de oficiales aquí en Nevada, porque le ayuda a él mucho en su crecimiento y él le, le encanta ayudar a otros a crecer como oficiales para levantarlos a ellos que lleguen a su posición algún día. Pero por el momento él le encanta su posición y lo bueno que es, la posición es cuatro años, y en cuatro años puede ser otra cosa que se mueva a otra posición, pero por, por ahora él está cómodo y le encanta su, su posición de, de oficial de Nevada. Uh, Danny, um, turning, turning the calendar, what, what do you expect what USA Boxing will have us do here in Nevada uh, for amateur boxing? I mean, is, is something that's been talked about with USA Boxing or Mike Campbell and as far as uh, I, we know we have to go by the commission and, and, and the government but w what do you expect and what do you see that USA Boxing could come to terms with you know officials and, and, and the government law for, for, for amateur boxing because we, we see pro boxing and, and we see obviously it's pro boxing is totally different but mm -hmm. You know, why can't we have our kids uh, compete here in Nevada? What, what do you think that's what's holding back that? Well, I think that it, it all starts, it's political, right? So everything has to do with politics. And so it is something where obviously the pros have money to have testing and to obviously 
you know, um, have power, right? Money talks. And so in that case, we're a nonprofit. We don't have that ability. Even USA Boxing, uh, they have certainly tried. Mike McAtee was in contact with Bob Bennett and some other members of the uh, Athletic Commission. And so um, we've certainly tried. Uh, the thing about it is just that um, the liability is high for a nonprofit. You know, we just don't have the money to try to, um, to really, I guess, deal with the li liability issues. Um, but I know that in the future, uh, obviously COVID is going to come to pass and we'll be okay once that point comes. But um, I think the biggest thing is that our leadership continues to try to push for it. Uh, you know, we represent the boxers and the coaches and the most important thing that we can do is ask, right? If, if you don't ask, then you'll never, you'll never get what you want. And so I think that it comes down to our LBC leaders and USA Boxing leaders just staying on top of the issue, not letting them rest. And as I say, bring it to their attention and then maybe they'll, they'll understand. You know, obviously we've taken good safety measures. All of our gyms are in compliance with COVID restrictions and so on. And so um, I think the more they see that we're complying and that nobody's getting COVID, that we'll be able to move past it timely, you know? Uh, Danny comenta que, que él espera que USA Boxing y este OBC sigan peleando, uh, llegar a un acuerdo con la Comisión y el Estado de Nevada para que se dé eventos nuevamente eh, de amateur en USA Boxing aquí en Nevada. La razón es que la, la, la cantidad de, de, de daños puede ser bastante grande. Entonces, el gobierno aquí no ha dejado que USA Boxing vuelva a tener eventos. Ahora, este OBC sí está peleando grandemente para que se ingrese nuevamente los eventos de boxeo aquí y nunca han dejado de pelear para que eso siga sucediendo. Tienen un liderazgo muy bueno este OBC 49 para que representar a los atletas que quieren seguir peleando y quieren seguir teniendo eventos y ellos no han dejado de descansar, de seguir sometiendo su requisito para que vengan a, a seguir teniendo eventos. Um, Danny, um, thank you for having us here. Um, it, it's it's been a pleasure. Uh, but uh, before before I go, I want to I want to get back to to your to your brothers. You you have uh, Angelo Vela and Philip Vela, and are are you going to be helping them, or are you just going straight as an official? Or is your yeah. dad is only going to be the one uh, in their corner? Or? So. Um, I do, I train my brothers, you know, here at the gym, but as an official, obviously I have my obligations as chief and so, um, which I love and I love the work that I do. And so I will be there strictly as an official, okay? Um, obviously for conflict of interest reasons, I'm not gonna be a coach or corner man at, at the tournaments, um, but I'll be there and obviously will not be working their bouts or anything, you know, but um, yeah, so it'll be my dad in the corner and uh, the boys are excited because they get to second in each other's corners, so they think that that's cool, you know. Oh, that's that's, that's going to be something. It is, nice. And, yeah. and, and Philip, uh, is this going to be his first uh, bout? Uh, Angelo, you mean? Angelo. Uh, Angelo. Yeah, Angelo, it'll be Angelo's first bout. Yeah, so Angelo, it'll be, he, like, as I said, his first ever time competing, and so hopefully he'll be able to be a national champion, and he's, he's a competitive boxer. I think that he'll do very well. Wow, so... Danny va a estar en las nacionales, al igual su papá, y como mencioné anteriormente, Angelo va a tener su primera, Angelo Vela va a tener su primera pelea en, este, en las nacionales, que es algo que sería histórico porque va a debutar en las nacionales, que normalmente eso no se haría, pero como ha pasado todo esto de la pandemia, pues Angelo va a tener la oportunidad, Angelo Vela, de debutar en el, en el nacional de USA Boxing. Al igual Philip Vela va a estar compitiendo su hermano eh, en el torneo con su papá. Danny estará, pero Danny estará como eh, oficial solamente por las reglas de USA Boxing. Danny no va a estar en la esquina ni, ni va a estar envuelto en las peleas de su hermano. So, so, solamente va a estar su papá. Danny sí ayuda a sus hermanos Angelo y Philip entrenar aquí donde file y va a ser algo bien bonito de una historia de, de, de la familia Vela estando en Luisiana este, este diciembre. Danny, man, I, I want to appreciate you for everything you've done for this LBC and amateur boxing and thank you again for having us here in the undefeated gym and we hope to see you in the future again in Motel BB and if you could tell us um, 
uh, your fans and, and your followers <laughs> because you know we, we, we know you do so many other projects and, right. and to follow Hotel Del V and to keep watching us because there's more to come for amateur boxing and Hotel mm -hmm. Del V. Well, yes, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I, I uh, you know, love speaking with our boxing community and to everyone out there, you know, just continue doing what you're doing to the fighters, the boxers. Keep boxing, keep working hard. Coaches, you know, stay on top of it. And if there's anything for the amateurs, if there's anything I can do uh, at the LBC level, you need anything, um, we'll make sure my contact information is made to you. And uh, just, you know, keep working hard. We'll be out of COVID soon, and we'll be back to competition, back to boxing here in Nevada. And so, again, if you could give us the address to your uh, gym and your social media uh, mm -hmm. contents, and if, it, if this gym open to the public, mm -hmm. and, and your contact uh, for, for this community and, and boxing. Yeah, so you want me to say it? Now? Yeah, so um, we are located at 671 Professional Avenue in Henderson, Nevada. That's 89015. Suite 515. Uh, you can contact me at my cell. It's 702-328-3142. And we are open to the public. Uh, at this time, it's, it is a gym. It's, uh, my father and I are the only coaches, so we don't generally have a lot of competitors, we, a lot of beginners here um, that we you know, want to groom up. But uh, it is open to the public. If you're somebody all ages, we have adult classes for people just looking to do fitness. We also have youth classes and things. So for beginners, come on by. Check us out and we'd love to have you. Danny comenta que sí, el gimnasio está abierto al público y su preferencia es este, unos muchachitos que están verde, eh, que están comenzando o que quieren perder peso y el coche es su papá y, y Danny y eh, su preferencia es obvio a Mateo para que empiecen en, en los fundamentales de boxeo y bienvenidos a todos. Mm -hmm. All right, we ready? Hi everybody, this is Danny Vela. I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm here at Undefeated, my boxing gym. I encourage everybody to come down here. We're located at 671 Professional Avenue in Henderson, Nevada, 89015. Uh, come check us out. We'd love to have you. And just remember, you're watching the Box AOLV, the best social media uh, boxing commentation in the valley. <laughs>